All right, so far we know how we can make use of Hess's law so that if you are given with two or more uh, equations, two or more entropy terms, then you can make use of these to either construct an entropy change cycle or by combining these equations, we are able to find out the entropy change of a certain reaction. Okay, now in this part, we want to do more practice and we try to talk more about the strategy, how we can uh, make use of different entropy terms to get what we want. Okay, now this time we are dealing with this uh, reaction. Calcium reacts with oxygen to form half a calcium oxide. Now you realize that this one is the thermochemical equation for the standard entropy change of formation of calcium oxide. Okay, however, this again is not suitable to be determined by a calorimetric experiment because you know calcium is quite a reactive metal. So when you react, when it reacts with oxygen, it actually reacts very fast and vigorously. It has a safety issue as well as being such a fast reaction, it is quite difficult to measure the heat change. Also, because this reaction takes place so vigorously, a lot of heat is released and calcium is actually able to react with nitrogen in the air to form calcium nitride. So we have easily side reaction taking place. Therefore, calorimetric experiment doesn't seem to be feasible. Okay, so that's why we have to rely on the Hess's law, we have to improvise, we have to think about uh, more than just one reaction and to see if other reactions are able to construct a cycle. Okay, now in this case, instead of doing a direct uh, experiment, we actually do two experiments. Actually, we will react calcium with dilute hydrochloric acid and we will react calcium oxide with dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay, let's have a look at the two equations. So the first one, calcium reacts with hydrochloric acid. So this reaction, we can find out the delta H easily using calorimetric experiments. Think about it, you just have to uh, measure a certain mass of calcium granules, add it into a certain quantity of hydrochloric acid, and we measure the temperature of the hydrochloric acid before after the experiment, then the temperature difference would be the delta T uh, using the mass and the specific heat capacity of water, then we can find out the heat change. And based on the quantity of calcium that we used at the first place, then we can find out the entropy terms easily. Similar idea goes for B as well. So in other words, these two terms can be easily determined using a simple calorimetric experiment. Now, we also have to make use of one more uh, literature value, which is the standard entropy change of formation of liquid water. Okay, this one you find it from the data booklet. Okay, so having three uh, thermochemical equations, three entropy terms, now we can combine these three equations to get what we want. Now the technique here is that actually we try to combine the equations, right, using these three. So it's like mathematics, but instead of having the terms that is going to be added together and find out the, uh, the sum or find out the, the results, this time we try to do it in another way around. Actually, we want to combine the equation, but we start from the final result. We want to know what we want at the end. So what we want is calcium reacts with oxygen to form calcium oxide, okay? So we try to improvise, we try to think, hmm, how can we arrange these equations so that when they are added together, we are able to get the final result as what we want. We first look at the calcium, okay, the calcium. So you want the calcium on the left hand side of the equation, right? And if you look at these three equations, you realize that only equation A is having a calcium and it is also on the left hand side. And there is one more of calcium here, 
similar to here, also one more. So what we're going to do is, you simply have to copy and paste this equation down here. So you see, calcium reacts with HCl to form calcium chloride and hydrogen. You just have to copy this down here. They are exactly the same, right? And this one is delta H naught A. Okay? Now, moving on to the next one, you see, um, you have calcium oxide. And you expect to have one mole of calcium oxide on the right hand side of the final equation okay if you look back to the given equation you look at equation b now equation b is the only equation that has the calcium oxide which is on the left hand side one mole so we have to make use of this equation and for this time we need to flip the equation flip the equation why do we have to flip the equation this is because we want the calcium oxide on the right hand side but with the given equation it is on the left so we have to flip it okay do we have to like increase the stoichiometry we don't have to because it's one mole here and one mole here okay so what we do what we, what we do here if you look at down here we basically copy this equation down here but we flip it we flip it okay now as we flip it the enthalpy terms will change its sign. So here, maybe it is uh, exothermic. Down here, it should be endothermic. Okay, something like that. Okay. Then lastly, here, this one, you see we have oxygen on the left, but this is half mole of oxygen. Down here, A, we also want half mole of oxygen on the left. So do we have to flip it? No. Do we have to change the stoichiometry of this, of this equation? No. We just have to, again, copy and paste. Copy and paste. Okay? So this is how we arrange the three equations. After arranging the three equations, you can double check. To double check, basically, you can look at um, these color the terms. You realize that you see HCl here, HCl here, on both sides of the, of the, two, of the three equations, they have two HCl all together. So this two can be cancelled out. Okay. Similarly, calcium chloride can be cancelled out. Okay. Water can be cancelled out, of course. And lastly, hydrogen can be cancelled out. Okay. So what do we have left? We have calcium, calcium oxide, and half more of O2, which is exactly what we want down here. Do you agree? So that's why when we arrange the three equations in this manner, when they are combined up, then we must have this one. So this is what I want. This is what I said at the beginning. We try to arrange the equation so that we want we can get what we want. So that's why we start from the result and then we move back to the to the, to the steps, if you put it this way, okay? So here, delta H would be equal to these three terms added together, so A plus C minus B, okay? So A plus C minus B, okay? If, and like I said, A and B, these two are experimentally determined, experimentally determined, and this one, is from the data booklet, data booklet, okay? Now, regarding this uh, experiment, actually, we have another video concerning about the actual uh, procedures, the actual data manipulation. So, you are strongly advised it to watch that video after this uh, video, okay? Now on the right hand side here, this is uh, just to show you another method using the enthalpy change cycle. Now you see, you can have this one, you can also have this method. Both methods can arrive to the final uh, result. Delta H equals to A plus C minus B. A plus C minus B, right? Now you may ask, hey sir, can we simply choose one method and, and forget about the others? 
um, sorry, no, because nowadays the ESE exam, uh, they could ask you to solve the problem using an enthalpy change cycle or using the method of combining equations. So that's why both methods you need to know. Okay. Now here, if you want to make use of a cycle, it is also uh, starting from the result, starting from the one that we're looking for. Okay, we start from this equation, and then we will see calcium is on the left hand side here, and calcium, the only uh, equations that is involving calcium would be reaction A. And reaction A, calcium reacts with hydrochloric acid to form calcium chloride and hydrogen. Now you realize that here for delta H not A, actually the reaction is involving calcium and hydrochloric acid. Okay, so it will form calcium chloride and hydrogen. You realize that the oxygen doesn't react in this step. So what we do is we simply copy this one down here. So the one that is actually undergoing a chemical reaction is the calcium. Oxygen remains unchanged at this moment. Okay. Now, after this step, then moving on to the next step, you see we have hydrogen, we have half mole of oxygen, and we can make use of the delta H not C, which is the standard enthalpy change of formation of liquid water. We, we realize that this half O2 and this H2 here is able to react to form water, okay, to form water. So you see calcium chloride actually doesn't react. So we just copy it and put it down here, okay? And lastly, we can make use of the delta H not B here. So this term, the calcium oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid to form calcium chloride and also water, okay? So this is how we can make use of those entropy terms to construct a cycle. After constructing the cycle, then we can choose the starting point and the end point. Usually, the way I choose is I will choose the one that does not involve any flipping of arrows. So, for example, I will start from here and ends at here. If I put it this way, then you can either go for this one or this one. Okay? You don't have to flip any arrows. If you have chosen this one as the ending point, then you have this path and this path. If you go for this path, you need to flip this arrow. When you flip this arrow, uh, just to be pay attention that the sign of the entropy terms have, have need to be changed as well. So that's why I don't like to flip arrows because I don't want to change the sign. It's easy to make mistakes. Okay, now, so if you go for this one, so it's A plus C, okay, so A plus C. If you go for this path, then it will be delta H naught plus B. So delta H naught plus B. Rearranging the terms, then we have the same as before. Okay, so this is how it works. Now, let's look at the back. We have a four practice question. Um, this one, we try to make use of both the combining equation method as well as uh, the entropy change cycle. Now, I will do one demonstration and then I will leave the rest to you. Okay, now let me show you with the first one. So I try to, okay, separate this space into two. I will start by combining equations. So the first one here, uh, combining equation, this is what we want. H2 plus O2 forming H2O2. So combining equation, what we want at the end is The hydrogen peroxide okay this is what we want so using the first equation now you will see h2 is on the left h2 is on the left one mole one mole you don't have to flip anything just copy so h2 reacts with half o2 to form h2o liquid and also copy the delta h so this one is 2x6 kilojoule per mole Okay, looking at the second equation, you realize that H2O2 is on the right-hand side, H2O2 is on the right-hand side, 
uh, one more, one more, so that you know don't have to flip. You just have to copy this one down. So H two O half O two forming H two O two. So here again, copy the enthalpy terms. Okay. Now let's see if anything can be cancelled out. Now here water can be cancelled out, right? And these two can be combined, right? Half O2 can mix can combine with half O2 to form one O2. So you realize that hmm, this is exactly what we want. Then that would be done. So the delta H here, the delta H equals to plus 98, if you tap your calculator, then the enthalpy change would be negative 188 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so this is uh, the method of combining equations. What about the method of constructing enthalpy change cycle? So let me show you. So first of all, copy this one down, H2 O2 H2O2 liquid. Okay, so first of all, we make use of the first equation, it doesn't matter. So H2 and O2, when they react, they will form H2O. So let's put down H2O liquid. And remember, for this equation, it only utilizes half O2, but you have one O2 here. So actually, we have half O2 remain unreacted okay and this one which you need to copy the enthalpy terms this one uh, to x6 kilojoule per mole okay and then for this one h2o and half o2 it can actually form the h2o2 liquid so this one is positive 98 kilojoule per mole okay so actually that's that this is the delta h that we are looking for so this is the starting point, this is the end point, this one equals to this one, so delta H equals to negative 2x6 plus 98, which also equals to negative 1x8 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so this is how we can make use of the two methods to find out the enthalpy change. Okay, so right now, do spend some time to work on the remaining three questions, okay? All right, so let's check the answers. Now for B here, we are looking for this one. So let's start with the combining equation method. So sulfur, oxygen, sulfur dioxide, so the first one here, sulfur on the left, yes, but there are two sulfur, but here we only got one sulfur. So we want to have this equation. So sulfur reacts with 3 over 2 oxygen to form SO3, yes. Now, as we are halving the equation, we also have to half the delta H. So here, uh, we can just put down here at the moment, kilojoule per mole okay for the second one we are looking for the sulfur dioxide on the right hand side but here the sulfur dioxide is on the left so we have to flip this equation at the same time we are looking for one mole of sulfur dioxide only but there are two uh, with the given equation so not only do we flip the equation but we also have to have the equation so it becomes SO3 forming SO2 and half O2, okay? Now in this case, we have to flip it, so it becomes positive 196. So positive 196, also we have to half it, divided by two, kilojoule per mole, okay? And this is delta H that we are looking for. So here, delta H equals to negative 790. divided by 2 plus positive 196 divided by 2 
then you just have to tap your calculator. So there you go, negative 297. Okay, let's do the same thing using the, the enthalpy change cycle. So here, let's just copy this one down. So sulfur uh, reacts with oxygen to form uh, sulfur trioxide. So here, it reacts to form sulfur trioxide. Now, but pay attention here. Uh, since we have only one mole of sulfur here, so we have to half the equation. So it actually requires uh, three over two moles of oxygen but we only got one mole of oxygen here, so we need to add an extra half mole of oxygen so that this two all together will give us uh, three over two moles of oxygen. Okay, and this one would be uh, Okay. Now, the next one, SO2 reacts with oxygen to form SO3. So uh, from here to here, Okay, so SO2 reacts with oxygen. Now because we have one mole of SO2 here, but we have two moles of SO2 here, so it only requires half mole of oxygen for the reaction. And it forms one mole of SO3 as we expected. Here, we don't have to flip um, the enthalpy terms. So we can simply keep this one. Okay, kilojoule per mole. Now, of course, you can, you can do it another way around. You can have the SO3 uh, reacts to form SO2. It's perfectly fine. Um, it just suits yourself. If you're moving from here to here, I just let me just put it down. Uh, but this one is the alternative me method. Uh, so in, in your real answer, you don't have to indicate both. You can also put it this way, uh, from here to here, okay? Then... This time, you actually do minus half O2. You get it, minus half O2. Because when sulfur trioxide reacts to form sulfur dioxide, it also gives you half O2, but you don't put it here. You put it as minus half O2. And for this one, you will put it as 106 divided by 2 kilojoule per mole. Okay? So you can do both. It doesn't matter. All right. So let's just stick with the blue one, okay, the one that I uh, improvised. So here, delta H, you can set this one as the starting point. This one is the end point. So this path equals to this path. Okay, so you will have negative 790 over 2 equals to delta H plus negative 196 over 2. Okay, by rearranging the term, you realize that it could be 2 minus minus 196 over 2 right so it would become the same as this one right this two would be the same right minus minus become positive okay so it should also give you 297 kilojoule per mole okay so now we are going to speed things up let's look at the next one
I have overlooked this one because if you realize that um, the final equation we want to have one mole of hydrogen on the product side but here hydrogen hydrogen they just cancel out so in order to have a hydrogen on the right hand side you actually need to multiply this equation by 2 so I should put down 2 uh, 2 and then one mole of oxygen so here, this term actually need to be multiplied by 2. As you multiply this term by 2, you add 1x6 here, then this one should give you uh, negative 154. Okay? Alright, let's have a look at the enthalpy change cycle. Let's start by putting down the final equation, the one that we are looking for. Okay, so I can start with the first one and I can actually deal with the water here. So H2O can be decomposed into H2 and O2. Okay, so I'm focusing on the water here. The water can become uh, H2 and O2. And because there are two more of this, basically I'm flipping this equation and multiply by two, then we will have Okay, and the sodium doesn't react, so we just put it down. Okay, the next thing we can do is you can follow the third equation, the sodium reacts with hydrogen, oxygen to form sodium hydroxide. So basically this one, hydrogen and also oxygen. Okay, so all of this could be reacted to form sodium hydroxide, solid. Now, but pay attention here, uh, we have two sodium, two hydrogen and one oxygen. So here it actually gives us two sodium hydroxide. So this equation you can have 300 minus 2 kilojoule per mole. Okay, but also pay extra attention uh, by multiplying this equation by 2 you actually consume only one mole of hydrogen. But we have two moles of hydrogen here so you should have one mole of hydrogen here remain unchanged. And lastly from here to here Okay, solid sodium hydroxide become aqueous sodium hydroxide. So you can simply do following the second equation. So it is negative 63 multiplied by 2 kilojoule per mole. Okay. So it is negative 154 kilojoule per mole. So part D. NO reacts with O to form NO2. Okay. So let's start from the first one. Now you realize that eh, the first one. O3, O2, eh? we can't find it from the final equation. So this is a situation where actually the first equation is used to cancel out uh, some chemicals that is involved uh, in other, other equations. So usually if you come across this situation, you don't start with the first one. You start with other things first. So maybe we can start from uh, the last one. Okay, so you see NO on the left, uh, NO2 on the right, which is uh, easier. So let's put it down first, NO, O3, NO2, O2. Okay, you just direct copy and you don't have to flip anything. So just negative 199 kilojoule per mole. Okay, then we can look at the second one. You see oxygen and the oxygen atom. You want to have one oxygen atom on the left. So you want to flip this equation and also half it. So you have O forming half O2. Okay? So this one, as you flip it, you do negative 495, you also have it. 
So Kilo Joule per mole. Okay. And now let's look at the first one. It is time for us to cancel out something that we don't want. You see, uh, we have O2 here, O2 here, and O3 here. We doesn't we don't want these items because at the end we don't see any O2 and O3. So uh, now on the right hand side we have uh, altogether three over two O2. Okay, and on the left we have one O3. So how about we use the first equation? But we have it, we have it, and we also flip it. Okay, so then it becomes O3 and then 3 over 2 O2. Okay, by doing this, you flip it, so this one becomes positive 4 to 7 and divided by 2 kilojoule per mole. Okay, let's see if we can cancel them out. So um, O3 here is gone. Okay, here. 3 over 2, O2, and altogether 3 over 2, O2, cancel out, cancel out, cancel out. So you see, the rest of them is what we want. NO, O, NO2, right? So that should be fine. So down here, the delta H equal to positive 4 to 7 over 2 plus negative 495 over 2 um, plus negative 199 equals to negative 233 okay uh, for the enthalpy change cycle we start from NO we have with O2 to form NO2. We can start by looking at uh, 3 here. So it reacts with ozone. To form NO2. And oxygen. Now, so it forms an oxygen here. But we also have an oxygen here. So we have two oxygens in total. Okay. This one is negative 199 kilojoule per mole. Okay, now looking at this equation, we already get the NO2. It's time to get rid of the O2 here. So to get rid of the O2 here, first of all, O2, uh, uh, sorry, this one is an oxygen atom. Sorry, I made a mistake here. So this one is an oxygen atom. So instead of 2O2 here, we have 1O2 plus an oxygen atom. Okay, it should be the case. Okay, so next step, we want to get rid of the O2 and the O because you know this is what we want. So now we can, we want to get rid of this and this. Okay, so how about we change the oxygen atom into O2 atom? Okay, so oxygen can react to form O2. Okay, so uh, let's just have half of the half mole. So you make use of this equation divided by 2, then we will have 3 over 2 O2. Okay, so this one is only like positive 495 divided by 2 kilojoule per mole. Okay, and lastly, with this one, if it wants to become NO2, alright, you just have to get rid of the O2, so you want to form O3, right? So 3 over 2 O2 is able to form 1 O3. So we can minus O3 here. So but, and this one will be negative 4 to 7 divided by 2 kilojoule per mole. Okay. So that is how we construct the cycle. Now, so the delta H is over here. So delta H equals to this path. right? So basically we add these three terms together. So the delta H equals to negative 199 plus 495 divided by 2 plus negative 2, 427 divided by 2. Oh wait, uh, this one it should be negative because we are flipping the equation. We are flipping the equation. So this one should be negative. Negative here. And from here to here, O2 becomes O3. Uh, again, I was 
flipping the equation so this one becomes positive okay so it should be like this and now the two equations are the same okay so the answer would be the same as well okay so this is how it works so you see uh, it is all about you no know, practice and be extra careful always double check especially uh, the sign uh, when you flip it, you have to flip the sign as well, okay? So that's it for the practice question, and that is also the end of the video.